Done this. Roger, what was that noise? Are you talking to me, or are you just uselessly praying? Roger, there must have been some kind of explosion. Don't you have seen anything, sir? Oh no, not me. I'm just the lonely lumberjack trying to divert his attention from the fat man in front of me and the blood curling screams of agony coming from the next street, just so I can think of other things in life. That's no way to talk to a respectable shopkeeper like myself, sir. There was some kind of accident. We must assist the constructor, sir. You know, if you were really annoying me, you'd refrain from your basic peasant manner and stop calling me sir. Perhaps you're right. Oh, stop, stop, stop. I'm sorry, I can't stop. I have to get this supply of lager to the contractors. They're always going on about an insatiable appetite for lager, especially during crisis. I shan't bother you long. I merely wonder if I could pinch a single pint from you. I feel like I haven't had a decent thing to drink in I'm days. I'm a few extra. Why not? Okay. You know, Adam, my friend, I always said a single pint won't hurt the squirrel. <laughs> What is that noise? Would someone tell me what that noise is? Strolling in the tranquil night, and suddenly screams of agony and chaos fill my ears. My, my, my. Adam, Adam, don't let them know. That's what they said. Oh, wait, no they didn't. Oh, that's not gonna help. Good God, you're heavy. <laughs> Where am I? Who are you? Who am I? The usual questions. Oh, what else do you expect me to say when I've woken up in a stranger's house and I can't remember a thing? Touche. Uh, is that German? I think so. Uh, never <laughs> learned the language. <laughs> For you would be the better question. I found you unconsciously in the street near the anarchist attack. I thought you were impaired in some way. As far as I can see, I'm as clean as a window pane on a Monday morning. My name? I do not know. How could you not know your own name? If one did not know one's name, then one would not exist. By that you mean? My own words elude me. Give me a name. Okay then. Uh, James. No. Okay, I thought that was too short time. Um, what about Prometheus? That is insolent, my friend. You're not naming me like a pet puppy on an awkward Christmas day. What about Barney? Barney seems like a fine name. Oh, well, okay. Unless you've got any other ideas, I'll take Barney then. Good evening. We were just wondering if Adeline is here. She asked to speak with us urgently. Uh, sorry ladies, I haven't seen Evelyn all day. Maybe we'll see if she's at home then. Thank you kindly. Stuff him, Georgia, as if he doesn't know where he is. Yeah, he's always tailing around and much chases his tail. She must be at her place by now. Let's just check. Good plan, Jane. Should I be asking who Abilene is? My lady friend? Why the omen scratch the ear? She's, in some people's eyes, a bit odd, and her father disapproves me to boot. She won't let me tell anyone we're together, except we can keep a secret. Why are you telling me, then? I could be the biggest blabber in England, France, and Russia, for all you know. But how would you know? Touché. That's a good German word. Much better than Prago. I don't think that's... <laughs> Sorry, I blame my dear, but I don't think David Machinarium is the right man for you. What's wrong with him? He's handsome, he's got money. What more does he need to fix your requirements? He will have a title, and in a few years he will be the Lord of Nish. I highly doubt that. Why? <coughs> He's head of a mechanics firm and owns a small flat in the wire districts. <coughs> he shall be the head of the greatest mechanics firm in England and own a sprawling estate. He has many coins, he just doesn't like to flaunt his wealth. Unlike some people, he's quite noble, actually. Abilene, why don't you go on a vacation for a while? I tricked to rid you of me? No. I'm the founder of the Nish Railway. And you can pop down to the seaside whenever you please. I don't like the seaside at this time of year, Dad. Fine, the countryside. You can take a leisure in the family lodge and pack the land. I'm allergic to wool, Father. <laughs> I'm in there. Don't you want to get away from it all? Give yourself time to think. Think about what you wish to do with your life. 
I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to come up with a better plan than marry a mechanic. <laughs> yes? What? No, I'll be there immediately. What has happened that you must be addressed so quickly by telecommunicator? <laughs> There's not had any gear attack. On the rail line, I must leave. We knew you were here. You were not a few hours prior. We went to David's house regrettably. I was quarrelling with my father. Was it about David and his lack of title? You guessed it. He's so predictable. What are you going to do about it? Father says I should go on a little trip to the seaside to contemplate about my future. <laughs> like I'd do that. Yes, <laughs> of course. The only reason why I want to marry him is so we can dive headfirst into the wealth he's brewing up. Can you imagine what we'd have? You're as crafty as a common criminal. You do realise I'll be taking that as a compliment. Great disguise, isn't it? But when will David pop the question? He'll have to do it soon. Father Homely's getting rather edgy. Seven is quite complicated. Polite but excrement. Shy but eager. He'll ask soon, definitely. <laughs> Jim! Well, considering I can't make much in the way of introductions, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Oh, okay. I am David Machinarian, head of the local mechanics firm, and I'm on the verge of becoming a millionaire. Oh, spare me some of that if you would. I grew up in a wealthy childhood, but my father died, leaving all of his wealth for my eldest brother, who swiftly ran away after the funeral. <laughs> he didn't get a penny. How terrible. I know. I had to find my own wealth. I dabbled in theatre, but felt I was better at paperwork than acting. So I found my own company. What a life. I know. I'm still living it. We're seeing a great change in the world today. Men kill for the happiness of terror. Ah, oh, the anarchy. Such evil doers. But me? No. I'm a clean cut gentleman. Uh... Hey, well, mate, we did it! We actually pulled it off! We've got enough liquor to last the war! It's a sample, but the rest is in the van. Shh. Uh, we have a guest. Yes. Uh, Barney, these are my close colleagues from work. They've just arrived back from the factory, yes? What was that about liquor? Oh, don't worry yourself. Uh, they've just spent their whole pay at the bar, as silly as it is. Uh, this is Barney. I found him unconscious near the anarchy attack. He's lost his memory. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Barney. I'm all over it. I take care of the maids at the factory. I have everyone eating up from palm my hand. I feel more like the boss. <laughs> <laughs> this is Charles. Sanitation. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Robin. Accountancy. <laughs> And this is Peter, uh, assistant accountancy. We're a fine gang, aren't we? Pleasure to meet you all. You're in the anarchy attack. So are you. Must have been a terrifying experience. I can't remember it really. Or anything pre-hand for that matter. Truth. Now that is terrible. You cannot remember your own life. And there may not be a life I want to remember. I might have been just a penniless tramp caught in the crossfire. I might have been a rich, lazy bachelor. I just don't know. I once heard of a man who lost his memory. Oh, uh, was it not Alec Nopkins? It was, wasn't it? How did he regain his memory? You wish to explain? This old chap, Alec Nopkins, crashed his fancy new automobile once, fine winter's noon, and the major blow to his head caused a measure. That's the good part. He completely lost his memory. A doctor prescribed a trip back for his life. By investigating the present, he could regain his past. I see what you mean. If Barney comes to grips with the world he's in, something may trigger him. Something may trigger for him to remember his past life. Similarly put. I see what I must do now. With you at my side, I shall embark on the quest to meet me. <laughs> Have you all forgotten our pact? Sorry, Dave. It was, it was a mistake. You should be well glad he's suffering from amnesia. You can't let him or anyone else know about ludicrous business. But we put off the heist, didn't we? That must be better. I am glad for your success, but don't let your victory distract you. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes sir. But yes, well, what shall we do with the bad Barney man? I'll tell you what we'll do with him. Chuck him off a bridge? Stab him in the back? No, the complete opposite. We'll take care of him, help him regain his past. Whoever he is, he might be important to our cause somehow. Very kind, sir. But what of the anarchy attacks? What of them? Well, we do know the culprits. The contractors could lead the attacks back to us. Don't worry yourselves about that, lads. It was years ago when I made that deal with the anarchists. All will be well, eventually. Truly great friends, David and Oliver. And I do not say that in light of the fact that I don't have any at this present moment in time. Barney, we're honoured to assist you in the grueling quest to regain your past. Yeah, we are. Ask us anything you wish. 
Allow me to guess. Policemen? Oh, how we wish they were. Damn contractors. Why demean them? The contractors aren't in power of enforcing the law. They abuse it. How they get it worth it? Just don't know. We. Audible people they are. They arrested a young girl on suspicion of carrying explosives in her handbag. Can you imagine? I saw it with my own eyes. I might lie. Indeed. Have we met prior to this day? I will inform you, good sir, that I've completely lost my memory. I don't see how I could remember you. We, oui, you're that rude jeune homme at the attack. Right cockhead you were. Well, I deeply apologize for my rudeness, but I wasn't fully aware of my actions at the time. I'd repay you if I had nary a penny to spare. No, no repayment required. I am just happy to hear an apology. Strange man, wasn't he? Quite. But come, honey, what is it you wish to do here? Oh, I don't know. May I try some of your finest French bread? Juno. Thank you. That's mm, nice, that's nice. Um, some cheese, any cheese. I do not mind. Juno. Some cottage Thank you. Oh, that's right. Um, I need a coat or something that makes me look... Do you know? Good. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Uh, I need something to stimulate my mind. A, a, a book of some sorts. Thank you. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> Enjoy Charles Dickens, I see, Barney. Book is it you're reading so vigorously there? Oh, a charming novel, Princess Rainbow Unicorn. It's just, it's just fantastic. Barney, if you want to get anywhere in this world, you will need a tall top hat. I am on it. What? No drums or gongs or dramatic fireworks? I'm surprised. It's not too special. <laughs> oh, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh. What was that entire ruckus about? I don't know. Maybe they caught knowledge that the food sellers were spiking their food to kill their willing customers. Or maybe they were part of the anarchists causing all these bombings. Or maybe they're innocent. Oh, yeah. I've decided that I don't like the contractors very much. No one does. They're the barnacles of society. All the stories here are true. Forget all the positive ones. They're inhuman, how they can do what they do. I completely agree with every fine detail of what you were saying. The contractors should be locked up in the asylum, boy. Jail. I prefer that. Excuse me? Oh, yes. I was wondering if any of you splendid gentlemen were searching for some second-hand toiletries. We've got great prices at Bob's low price loos. Uh, we're fine, thanks. How about a five-star chimney sweep? We've got dozens down at the local orphanage to choose from. <laughs> no, thank you. We, we do our own chimney sweeping. Thank you. We'll be going now. What about acting lessons? Pardon? Acting lessons. <laughs> Drama. Very cheap. Only a few blocks away. You'll be tutored by the eccentric Miss Alice. Wonderful teacher she is. Cheap, you say. Find any third right acting class and we'll beat it by 10%. David? Can't see why not. You might have a knack for it. Could help you with your memory. Sign me up then. Thank you, sir. I promise you will not be disappointed with your experience. Thank you. So, Barney, what do you think you've really learnt from coming back to the Sunday market? Well, I like French bread. I detest cottage cheese. I look right snazzy in a top hat. I do not like the contractor's presence and I'm good at reading myself of advertisers. You spoke that well. Thank you. But Will you like to actually go to the acting lessons? Hey, I might as well. That's a spirit. Uh, I've nothing to lose. How did the acting contractors in? They arrested the wrong people. <laughs> did you see that? I know. My, my, my. I can't believe the contractors just waltzed into a crowded area, left, uh, I've arrested some alleged, cr alleged criminals, left, and let a bomb go off in a crowded area. This must have happened before, damn contractors. I want to know who is behind these attacks, don't you? Many freelance detectives have tried, none have succeeded. Oh, dear. It's been days since I've seen you. I know, I've been caught up with work, you know the like. Yes, you are such a hard worker. Oh, more than work. Today in the live market, lively marketplace, a bomb went off. We were there. Who are you? Must have been shocking. Our new friend Barney's experienced too now, so we're blessed. Barney? 
It is a pleasure to meet you, Lady Abla. Lady! Did you hear that, David? Lady! Where on earth did you meet him? Um, I found him unconscious near the street, near the anarchy attack. He's lost his memory. <laughs> how sweet. Oh, how? How do you know your name then, Barney? Ah, well, David gave it to me. How sweet. Be sit. <laughs> Just remember, I must um, turn the kettle off. That's right, yes. Um, see you tomorrow, dear Evelyn. Why does he do that? Do you know, Barney? I couldn't say. Maybe he's afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of the future. Ready? Yes. 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 Begin. The richest man is not he who has the most, but the man that needs the least. Cowards die many times before their deaths. Valiant never tastes death but once. What's in a name that which we call a rose, but any other name would smell sweet? To my teeth will you come. This above all, to thine own self be true. What if everything is an illusion and nothing exists? In that case, I definitely overpaid for my carpet. <laughs> there, is, there is wisdom of the head and wisdom of the heart. Great men are forged in fire. This is the privilege of lesser men to light the flame. Always forgive your enemies. For his nose and so. Life is made of ever so many partings, welded together. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or take arms against a sea of troubles. That is quite good, Gillis. And by opposing, end them to die, to sleep. Gilly, that's enough. No more, and by <laughs> sleep to say, we end the heartache. Gillis, stop! You've given us all a heartache quite soon. Sorry, Miss Alice, but I've been practising all week. That is excellent, Gus, but maybe not okay. Now, perform a few of your routines while I prepare for our next activity. <laughs> to be honest with you, what a great line. Thank you, Ralph. Did you learn the entire line over the course of the week? You certainly did, Othello. I can do that. Too much yabber of sleeping and dying and shuffling off things. Are you demeaning Shakespeare, Nedley? He's the very reason we can all be here today. He isn't God, He He's God of the written world. Gilly, what do you think of this? It's Gilly, what do you think of this? Shut your yapper and trap or I'll shut up for you. What? What's Gilly? <laughs> you can't hold your name. And I have the right to use it. May I it? speak? I believe Shakespeare is a great writer. He should be respected by all. And Rose can call me what she likes. Good evening, I'm Barney. I was given a flyer for an excellent drama class taught by a certain Miss Alice. That is I. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, Barney. You wish to do my class? I was hoping you'd just give it a quick trial and see if I wish to stay. That is absolutely fine. I'll have to get your little details down. For me? Uh, Barney. Barney who? Your last name? Uh, I don't know. Are you conning me somehow, sir? I need a last name. Ah, uh, there's quite a good story to this, actually. You know of the recent anarchy attacks, I presume. Yes, my dear niece is in hospital. Too much thanks to the railway attack two days ago. Well, I was on a different attack on the same day and have completely lost my memory. My new friends, David Machinero and his colleagues, are assisting me in regaining my memory, and we all thought it would be a jolly good idea to take a few drama lessons, see if the man good at it. Do you understand? I think I do. Should I just put down Barney then? Yes. Ah, oh, a new actor. Everyone, this is Barney. He's completely lost his mind, so don't go asking him stupid questions. <laughs> oh yes, introductions. I'm Gillis Von Trapp. This is Rose Patella, Fellow Warren, Nedley Bartholomew, Ralph Barr, and Mercer James. We are all aspiring amateur actors. I do not like the term amateur, Gillis. All actors are actors. Agreed, Miss Alice. 
Now, Barney, I know you've lost your memory, but do you have any idea of your likes and dislikes in this world? Well, I like French bread, and the chess cards are cheese, and the contracts no, is no, all... No, 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 no. I don't mean material things. I mean spiritual. How do you feel now? Odd. <laughs> I don't think I'm supposed to feel like this. I don't feel like I've felt as before. Yes, hold on to that. That's emptiness. You're an empty soul, and we must fill you up to regain yourself. So we're gonna have a feast? No. You let's place my words into context. Barney, I have an idea. We're gonna do a few short performances, and you have to tell us what you see. Do you understand? Yep, I understand. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. A place with trees and people? Close. We'll do another. Nine, eight, seven, six. Oh, you know the rest. Uh, I, I don't know. You must. How can you not? I'll try this one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah, uh, yes, poker. Wait, how would I know that? Maybe you played poker before you were so Maybe, but poker's a beggar man's game, am I right? It usually is. None of my respectable friends would ever play it. Anyway, shall we continue with the lesson? What we have recently been strongly focusing on is speech, assisting Mercer with his stage fight. Do you feel like you can rise to any speaking challenge, Mercer? Yes, Miss Alice. I am as confident as a haphazard seal on a diving board. <laughs> Excellent. Now we move on to movement and expression through our bodies. Rose, what do I mean by this? Using our bodies to act as different objects or living things. Good example, really. You can express yourself through your body in many different ways. I want you to imagine yourself as a person. Their, their, their personality is complicated as can be. Now go. Interesting, Gillis. Try to truly imagine that you're inside the box. Understood. I've been locking myself in my cupboard at home to try and get a sense of really being locked in a box. <laughs> ah, good. Uh, Rose, what are you? A rich prima donna, miss. <laughs> you played it perfectly. I didn't even realise you were acting. <laughs> I fell out think you cannot not act. Oh yes, Miss Alice. But if the actor is to act as an actor, the actor must act as an actor of great acting skills would act. Even as a class detective, I have no idea what you are talking about. But I will accept it. Mercer, can you smile any more evilly? I'm sorry. <laughs> this is hurting. Perfect. Today. Barney went to the drama class with Miss Alice. Drama? How is that supposed to fix his brain? I don't know. I'm wondering, if I, I'm wondering if I should be wasting my time with Barney. He may have amnesia, but he's still as thick as two planks of wood nailed to a donkey. Planks of wood nailed to a donkey? No, no, no. I just want to know who he is, if you know what I mean. I don't. <laughs> uh, it's a great mystery. He was in the anarchy attack. Why was he in the, in the anarchy attack? And why did he survive? You don't know if he was hurt, do you? He could have had a concussion or something in that medical field. True. Well, you even saw him was in the attack. You found him in the neighbouring street. No. No, no, no. Why always with the always persistent questions? Charles, what of the train station heist? <coughs> Ever since our successful raid of the Porkington liquor cellar two days ago, I've been planning a heist at the local train station. They have a big vault there containing all of Mr. Homely's reserved money. It would be easy if we could get someone in there first. A man on the inside, you say? Precisely. Oh, the only way would be if you, David, could get behind staff only lines would be if, if I brought Abilene as proof, as identification, <coughs> because her father is the head of the railway line. Similarly, important. Lucky guess. What's the lucky guess, Charles? It was common sense. It's a good plan, but a more than friendly acquaintance wouldn't be allowed inside. I would have to be... What? I would have to be... You have to be what, David? I'd have to be married to the Abilene for the to work. Terribly sorry about my students. What an ungrateful bunch. Oh no, it's okay, I don't mind. At least I don't think I do. If I may ask, how old are you? No, sorry, you wouldn't know. Early thirties, I'd only guess. Accurate enough, I agree. You see, they are much younger, fresh out of school, know nothing of the civilised world. Do you consider coming back with us, Barney? 
Maybe. I'll give it a good thing. <coughs> Thank you. I'd better be off then. Goodbye. Bye. Hello, Governor. This is Mrs. Massonarian's office, is it? Uh, yes, it is. Well, I have a letter here for a certain Barney living in his residence. Barney who? Uh, just Barney. That would be me then. You, Governor? Oh, it's a check. For one million pounds? By the way, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> Rest in peace. And the best name. Why do you cry? You don't even know this man. That's the point. Anne and Bassanet, killed in an anarchy attack, left me one million pounds. He could, have, he could have been my father, my best friend, a son. Could have been a mistake. I hope so, but nothing seems set in stone anymore. Barney, David, come with terrible news. It cannot be as terrible as the news I've just received. Oh, it's terrible. Word's gone about, word's gone about your newfound fortune. You're now the second richest person in the whole town. Your surpass David's salary now just shy of Mr. Homely, the president of the railway. Bad news. This seems only good for Barney. Allow me to finish. The contractors believe that you've acquired the money illegally and intend on, intend on arresting you. But I haven't stolen the money. I am no thief. It doesn't matter. The contractors have got the power to arrest anyone they like. It doesn't matter if you're guilty or not. Dear God, what do I do? You have to secrete yourself in my flat for a number of months. Never dare to go outside. Hide? Why hide from the contractors? They are nothing without authority. Mere mortals like us. They can be bribed, intimidated, persuaded, fought. You don't wish to move in the aggressive side, Barney. They are number else by hundreds. I merely need protection. Bodyguards? Mercenaries? No, no, I wouldn't dream of putting under other individuals in peril. Well, it is their profession. No, I need teachings in protecting myself against contractors. Well, you couldn't possibly get a musket for a pistol. The contractors confiscated them all. Well, that puts me at a great disadvantage then. I can't think of any other options. Oh, my, my, my! Miles! Miles Skimitar! Yes, the head fencing coach of the club. Oh, fencing with swords and epées and other pointy objects? Correct. Miles owes me a few generous favours, and he'd be more than glad to help you to teach you how to teach. To teach you how to fence. Uh, fencing would be the perfect combat, perfect way to combat the contractors. I'll never know what hit them. Thank you. You will need a few pounds in your pocket, and a consent note to give to Miles, so he knows that you are the one who to teach. Oh, and I also packed you um, a packed lunch of salmon and avocado sandwiches with homemade ginger beer. Oh, no thanks, I'm not hungry. But it took me three hours. You better be off there. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be safe enough to avoid the contractors. Thank you again. Bon voyage. Why must he always use German words if one does not know? Okay. So what's now, Dave? Oh, <coughs> what are the transition heists? Well, we do know that... Oh, gosh. They're going to... Oh no, I have to propose to Abilene, don't I? Yeah, well, why so glum about it? She loves you. It's not as if you're really a bad choice. But I don't know if I can actually do it. It's a simple question. You could do it. Painful memories, Oliver, too painful. Elaborate. Okay. It was when I was younger, working in the coal mines. After a hard day's work, I saw the most beautiful girl you can imagine. I asked her if she wanted to go out with me, and she laughed. Thinking about it now, I was in a wretched state, covered in suit and grime, bogies rushing down my face. But her laughter is saved with me forever. Oh, but this is a different girl. You can do it. I don't believe in myself. Here's an idea. You pretend I'm Abilene and put a prose to me. <laughs> if you think anyone can believe that you're, a da you're as dainty as a girl as Abilene, you're not getting the means of dress and makeup. Begin. <laughs> Action. Uh, um, Abilene. Yes, dear, should we talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you doing it? Uh, I wanted to ask you a question. An important question? Uh, yes, um, I was, uh... David, you, dear? Yes, uh, Abilene, dear, Do you want I, a drink, darling? You're the pale. Yes, no, um, yeah, I like you, but no, I, I can't do this. <laughs> Is that not David? I see you running away to horse skull. He seems in great distress. Indeed it was. He seemed rather sad. Nervous. Oh, no. <coughs> what was he trying to say? I don't know. It must have been important. 
Could it be, well, what? You know, what? Isn't it obvious? David was trying to propose to you. I must say, he did an awful job doing so, but the sooner the better, I suppose. I've already made a list of things to purchase when we have tied the knot. <laughs> Could you please have a scarlet dress for me to that list? You didn't run headfirst into a picture? Oh, no, I didn't, Mr. Skimitar. Please, call me Miles. Ah, no need for your consent note. David has already given me instructions. Teach you defence, full stop. He knows nothing of the sport. Unless you possess the skill, it won't be as easy as he hopes. I'll try my best. Very good. Barbara and Billy will set you up. Hello. Have you ever done fencing? Uh, no, not in memory. I have not. You'll have a trial of Miles to see if you do indeed possess skill. Thank you. It's really interesting sport you know i haven't seen much of it in recent years yeah, but i've been told your hat here. oh thank you very much but i've been told that it's good i believe you should enjoy it thank you are you ready ready as i'll ever be okay now i'm going to try to tap the end of my fa on your chest like this and you need to deflect it as naturally as you can <coughs> don't worry if you miss or don't deflect my blow shall we begin Okay. <laughs> Are you sure you haven't done this before? Golly! You see, Barney? He just stepped miles well on the chest. <coughs> Wait. Why are we spying on Barney anyway? I don't know. I guess we're born. <coughs> Good sign. If you can defeat Miles that quickly, P and a million pound check will be safe. Just because you can knock a sword back, don't mean it's so. Are you here for a lesson, Jim? Um, well, you see... We have quick courses and long-term sessions. Ah, uh, no, we're oh. actually spying. Uh, yes, we're hoping for a short course to leave us. Right then, we'll get you all kitted up. skill of a man trained for years, not minutes. In your past life, you must have been a champion fencer. Yes, I must have been. Wait, I can recall something. So as I was saying, mate, <laughs> you could really go places with your talents. You don't need their help for money. I'd give you the funds to become a, the greatest <coughs> male fencer in the world. <laughs> in my previous life, I was to be the greatest fencer in the world. Um, that's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? You only beat me in one bout, and I'm not the best fencer around, you know. Well, then bring me your best. I wish to see if I truly am as great as I seem to be. <laughs> <laughs> now you know the basics. Let's fence. Who's first? <laughs> Squeamish, he is. Hi, dear. Sean, that's a strike. Who's next? <laughs> that's the longest route I've ever seen you play, Miles. I have rarely faced a fence of such determination and that's the game buddy. May I fence him, coach? I know. I want to fence him. You will all be able to fence him in due course. <laughs> but in order to test Barney's true ability, he must face the champion of our fencing club. Oh, I, I thought I was. <laughs> the champion. Please, I'm only a coach. Finesse Sharp is the champion. You're such a wimp, Peter. You don't need a sharp metal sword. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Barney, 
Meek Finesse, National Fencing Champion, over 100 medals won. <laughs> Finesse, this is Barney. He's a fencer. It is an absolute, complete, amazing, spectacular pleasure to become acquainted with you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you too. But I hope you realise, I'll smash you now. Don't be so pompous, I'm pretty good, says Miles. <laughs> I wouldn't bet a pound on it. Ha! Given a rest, you two, you'll need the energy for this bout. I shan't throw a breath to defeat him. Why don't we make this interesting? If I win, I can treat you to the finest restaurants in town. Is that right? Depends on how you look at it. And if I win, you die. Finesse. <laughs> you have something to lose, right? On guard. Ale. Oh! How is that fair, I say? He got you right in the chest. <coughs> Bears fair finesse. I won't stand for it. Free match! Okay, then. They're very much equal. So they are the Cobra and the Mongoose in timeless battle. Another Ready? rematch will not settle anything. <laughs> Fence. True. Another rematch. <coughs> we will not sell anything. We will conclude this competition. Pay debts. I guess we may now go to dinner. Yes. And then you'll eventually die. Can't be any worse. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting lesson, I just thought. Not as interesting as the two bouts between Barney and Finesse. The pair will be fighting for grand title with fencing champion. Two fences, equally skilled fences, fighting out. I would pay to see that. Now, now, we need to put another rematch on the back burner. We have a trip to prepare for. A trip? We will be travelling to the coastal town of Portsmouth to, to compete in the prestigious Danilov Cup over three days. Danilov Cup? Well, I thought that was only held in Russia. Not anymore, either. We will be leaving tomorrow at 9am sharp. So be at the near Shire Railway Station at 8am sharp. Is everyone able to attend? Yes. Right. Gentlemen to bed, before we rise at dawn. I jumped him squarely in the chest. That's winning the state championships for the fourth time in a row. Winning the Danlov Cup, I take it, would take only a flick of the wrist. I wouldn't underestimate the champion princes of Russia. I wouldn't underestimate the Fishman's Pub again. I'm glad we went there and died on mushy peas and <laughs> battered salmon. Instead of the fancy, overpriced trout from the Gavisy Boy. Oh, those expensive restaurants, so right. Oh, you live directly across from David's house, I see. So? Well, I thought he was a bit of, bit of an important gentleman around town, being the head of the, head of the mechanics firm. Important gentleman? Mechanics firm? <laughs> Tell me, buddy. Is David a nice person? Is he trustworthy and kind to you? So far, yes. That, you can't explain, David. You haven't met criminal mastermind David yet. What? He's actually a criminal. He packages dope and houses his wealth of stolen goods, that unholy warehouse of his. I don't understand. Why would he be helping me if all he were interested in were profit? Check. Oh my gosh. So anyway, Barney, had a good time tonight. Are you kidding me? You're as worthless as a drowning sea otter. How could you not keep an eye on Barney all that time? Oh, your world's pointy, sir. So sharp and pointy. <laughs> you have done it yourself, sir. Are you demeaning me? I'm not as pitiful and foolhardy as you lot. Barney, return. Where have you been so late tonight? So pointy! Barney, <laughs> you could cut someone's head off with that. I intend to. What have I done? I'm your friend. I wouldn't dob you in. I haven't done anything. <coughs> Shut it. You might as well be with the contractors, supplying them dope or whatever is you steal. David doesn't steal. Half your chair wants from the sweet store. He doesn't steal. Do you think me as fit as two planks of wood <coughs> nailed to a donkey? I know all about your drug trades and criminal mastermind qualities. Who told you? Finesse Sharp of the fencing club. A good for nothing hag witch. Do not insult her or this place <coughs> shall be even closer to your neck. Barney, I plead mercy. It is true. I'm the leader of a drug factory, but I'm not with the contractors. I wouldn't dub you in. <sighs> why couldn't you tell me? You think I tell everyone about my nefarious business? No, but why not me? 
You took me in. You promised to help me recover my memory, but all you wanted was <coughs> my money. We didn't even know you had a million pounds to your name back then. You would have taken it anyway. Why was I tailed by your henchmen on the way to the fencing club, David? To make sure that the contractors didn't arrest you. You know that is a lie, you weed coughing pheasant. <laughs> I come with more terrible news. <laughs> <laughs> it cannot be as terrible as the news I've just received. No, this is serious. There's been another anarchy attack. Where? The drama school. The drama school? How many dead? Several. Miss Alice, Rose, Mercer, <laughs> Fellow, Nedley, Ralph, and Gillis? Gillis! All dead? <laughs> These damned anarchy attacks, they were nice to me. Most of them. They didn't deserve to die. None of us do. Untrue, David. You do. Criminal mastermind like you, you know where the anarchist space of operations is. I do, but I... But nothing. You could have stopped this anarchy long ago. Now the deaths are on your shoulders. This isn't my fault. It is, in my eyes. Tell me where the anarchist space of operations is now, or I shall sit your throat with this effort. Barney, stay calm. Portsmouth, the nearest fishing town. They're housed up in North Boatyard from where they send all their attackers. Thank you kindly. Barney, I'm sorry! Well, that was the last thing I expected to see when I came back. He's going to get himself killed. He stands no chance. I feel sorry for him, really. He'll be fine. Surely not. No, he'll be fine. I just realised who Adam Bassanet is. The dead man who bestowed Barney a million pounds? Doesn't the name ring a bell? No. no. Oh my goodness! That's it. I know who it is. Aren't you a tad sad though, David? Not really. It was a cork head. Clear call. Now that Barney has left, it will give me some breathing room. And I will ask Ablin to take my hand in marriage. For the second time? I'd see legs then. Now, I will succeed and our greatest task can begin. It must be an important decision. What is it? It must be important. He didn't choose chai tea. When? And even if David asks me to marry him. I will simply say no. But this is madness! I wanted that scarlet dress! What in the world has compelled you to make this decision? Barney. What? <laughs> Barney has a million pounds. A million. <laughs> <laughs> he saves it up and gets a very well paid profession. We'll generate double him out in two years. He'll be loaded. What? <coughs> two scarlet dresses, Georgia. That's what I'm saying. I believe, my dear, would you marry me? Is that what you've been trying to ask me? Uh, yes. I'm gravely sorry, David, but I fall in love with someone else. Who? What? When? Where? Why? I've fallen in love with Barney. Barney? You met him two days ago. I've known you for three years. Are you sure you're making the right choice? Why, of course I am. Damn. I need Barney to persuade Abilene that he's not in love with you. <laughs> oh, but he's left for the... He's left for Portsford. I must catch the nearest... the closest train. To, bra to drag him back to her. I'm sorry, David. But love is a mysterious thing. I believe I must inform you that your potential groom has left for Portsford. How about I fetch him and bring him back to you and have an arrangement about your little titter tuzzle about your engagement? Do so at once! This is quite a noisy train. I've never yet been on a train. That was so noisy. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Would you mind passing over my briefcase? I don't want to trouble it. Ah, oh, not trouble at all. By George, you're handy like a haggard. I certainly am. And you are? You can call me Arthur. I must say, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. Your adventures in Africa have produced a fantastic novel. <coughs> you're one of my own moments. Well, I am flattered. King Solomon's mind was a masterpiece. Thank you. I've just recently finished my next novel, entitled She. This is a bit similar. That's why I'm in town. Meeting up with the new publisher. Look forward to the You've got that fencing girl, Fiona. Oh, no, this is going to work. Problem set? I'd never let a little problem bother me. I've had a few little problems lately. Dead imaginarium. For the mechanics, then? I don't know if you could say that now. What's your problem, then? Tough business deal or something of that sort? Something more personal. Do you know Barney? How could you not champion Fencil, millionaire? Are you a friend of his? An acquaintance, maybe. 
The point is, I need to drag him back to my girlfriend and inform her, so he can inform her that he's in love with her. He's in the carriage beside us. I didn't know Barney was coming with us to the Dunlop Cup. Fencing wouldn't be his priority at the moment. Why don't you just step in there and talk to him? I need to think <clears throat> of something to say first. What you do in this world is a matter of no consequence. The question is, what can make people believe you have done? What do you think? I can see the powerful message crafted into your words. I can't. <laughs> Thank you, Henry Lada Haggard, sir. Please. I am not sir. <coughs> Just call me Henry. <laughs> uh, can someone tell me what the message is? I don't quite get it. Henry, bless our ears with your literature. Very well. Allow me to withdraw my papers first. So, one with the buttons and the scarlet drapes? Yes, maybe without the elegant sleeves. Oh, Skimmer's Hawk, can you actually hear the words of dress sense coming out of your mouth? He <laughs> <laughs> does seem to be into that type of dressing. What the manuscript? Memory haunts me from edge to edge, and passion leads me by the hand. Evil have I done, and sorrow have I known. From edge to edge, evil shall I do, and sorrow shall I know, until my redemption comes. Oh, amazing. It is only an excerpt from my novel, Sheen, so the true message is camouflaged within the plot. Great piece of writing, that is. So, Henry, would you like to continue this conversation over a bottle of Chardonnay on me? Oh, that would be delightful. The message. What you do in this world is a matter of no consequence. <coughs> the question is, what can you make people believe you've done? Maybe that's what I'm doing, accidentally. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry about not, not telling you about my fairy business. Can you forgive me now? I need you to come back with me today. I believe there's no love for her. She is because I need to be married to her. My house wants to come. Like, can you please come back to me, please? Hi, David. <laughs> Hi, Barney. Are you honestly asking me to tell Abilene to marry you just so you can win yourself another fortune? I wasn't going to put it in that way, but. But nothing. If you get off at the next stop. Barney, please. This is important. Important to me, important to you, or important to the victims of the anarchists? To all of us! The money can be spent on weaponry to defeat the anarchists! Always with the lies. How can all you think about be money? I know, I shouldn't be like that, but Barney, this is important. Okay, I'll make a deal with you, one that doesn't involve money. If you come with me to Portsuit and help take down the anarchists, I will come back and deny our blame. Take down the anarchists is suicide. Either that, or no money. My, my, my. When we arrive at the Portsuit train station, you will direct us to the anarchist base of operations. Now arriving at Portsuit station, thank you for travelling with me. Well, it has been splendid meeting you, Arthur. That is all mine, Henry Ryder Haggard. Would you be at me the Dunlop Cup ball tonight by any chance? I certainly will be. I presume I will see you there. Indeed. Farewell. Oh, Richard, could you take my luggage for me? I must head off to the dress shop immediately. Oh, but I have my bag, my satchel, my fencing. Take it! Goodbye now! <laughs> a lone warehouse in the middle of a barren fishing dock. Like a pin-sized mole on a sun deprived back. How not very poetic of you. <laughs> Just trying to lighten up the mood. It's awfully <coughs> long sitting here in the mud, staring into a dormant building. David, we need you to lighten up the mood. We need to stay focused. Now, tell me of the leader of the anarchists. Sadly, I never formally met him. We had a, an arrangement at one point. A deal it was. But the purpose of it eludes me now. Edward Hepplewhite. Doesn't sound very sinister. He kept his parents' name. Conspicuous white top hat. Not to match his average waistcoat. A man of friendly appeal, but under his beach boy smile, there's a hatred for England. Is that his goal? To see England fall? I presume so. Barney, look! Contractors! <coughs> Could the contractors be working with the anarchists? Shh, wait. <coughs> no one's home, it seems. Quick, we must interrogate them. Top idea. Here. 
Take this. What? No, we can't kill them. Barney, sometimes you are really as thick as two planks of wood nailed to a donkey. <laughs> we are going to kill them. That would set the whole town on fire. Just as your friend. I see. Let's go. Help! Someone help! <laughs> Who sent you? I can only honor sort of breathe. Who are the anarchists? Who are you? I'm Chief Operating Contractor of Portsmouth. I was only checking to see if the residents were home. And what residents would that be? Tell us up front, where are the anarchists? I thought a few would be here, but my greatest guess would be that they are preparing for the Daniel's Cup dance tonight. Why would they go to the dance? They are the anarchists. Isn't it obvious? My, my, my. What, how do you, how do you know so much about the anarchists? I mean, upstanding contractors like you, I thought you'd be against them. I'll be sentenced if I told you. Is it that big of a secret? I'd be killed! By who? Your fellow contractors? Or me? Was that a good threat? <laughs> no. All right, I'll give the game away. The contractors and the anarchists are two halves of a whole. We choose the time and location, and the anarchists fulfill the job. <coughs> but why? The only use of the anarchists, as the contractors, is to defend England against peril and the foreign hordes. It has been a time of peace. The contra contractors had no use, so we had to make ourselves useful. So you kill innocent people of your own country, just the same business? Don't blame this on me. All I do is follow orders. Tell us, who is the leader of the contractors? I'll tell you everything. The leader of the contractors is Edward Happel. Go, you sorry men. You don't say a word of us. I am really confused now. <laughs> the head of the anarchists is also the head of the contractors. And he will be at the Dunlop Cup dance tonight. Vanessa Miles will be there. We must go there tonight and see how Edward Heppel went. And then? What? Silence his reign of terror. Vanessa! <coughs> Barney! <coughs> Why are you here? Why are you? You first. No, 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 you. To the Dunlop Cup, the dance is on tonight. Would you like to come with me? The, ho the dance must be cooled off. The whole cup, in fact. Why the so? The leader of the anarchists will be at the dance tonight. And so will the leader of the contractors. It's a long story, but there's worse still. There is a very high possibility that a bomb will be planted in the middle of the dance. Then how can he call it off? I don't even know who the organiser is. Yes, we must speak with Master Matar at once. <coughs> that was then, sir. And the lady? Vanessa Sharp, champion fencer. Brief me on the situation, would you? Sir, Barney, um, character is continuing to fall out of He's going to talk with Miles Skimitar about cancelling the Dunlop Cup. Considering how friendly he is with the fencing coach, he might just get his way. What do you wish us to do, sir? Kill Miles Skimitar, Finesse Sharp, and David Machinarian. I have a few personal matters with the supposed Barney. Can no one defeat me? I am not even trying to win. I will defeat you, Miles Skimitar. Do I know you? No matter. Let's go. Halt! Stop! It has been nice fencing with you, Miles Skimitar, but I'm afraid this will be a last bout. Who sent you? Who are you? Why did you try to kill Miles? We're getting good at conducting interrogations, aren't we? Agreed. <laughs> I would recommend taking his mask off. Thank you, Finesse. I was just about to do that. Do you know him? Never seen him before in my life. Why were you ordered to kill Miles? I wasn't ordered to kill Miles. Well, you had an awfully good go at it just then. I have a contract. Kill Miles, Skimitar. Finesse Sharp. And David Matthew. <coughs> You better leave the room, Barney. Why? Let's just say, Mr. Bassanet sends his regards. Get down! So as I was saying, the philosophical nurture of irony is a tight corridor that writers like ourselves must. My, what was that do you think? 
Uh, probably just the plumbing. Faulty is always. <laughs> 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 telecommunicator! Does anyone have a telecommunicator? There just happens to be one right here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Has something happened? Why isn't this some sort of automated call system? Oh, hello? Yes? Yes, there has been an anarchy attack at the Portsmouth Hotel. Injured? Too many. Thank you. Why are the anarchists doing this? You haven't done anything wrong. We merely wish to stop them. we have crushed any hope of that now. Will they still have the Danilov Cup, though? Probably. Can we stop it? Without Mars and David, they're going to die. But oh, how probably. do we survive? I Why can't, us? I, I, I kind of pushed us out of the room at the same time. Did you say you wanted to stop the Battle of Cup? Oh yes, we would be very happy to know the name or location of the organiser. I'm sorry my friend, the Battle of Cup is organised in Russia. Damn! So we have no way of preventing the deaths of hundreds of innocent people. What was the point of coming here? Okay, you can inform the police. What police? The police are the contractors and the contractors are the anarchists. Something still puzzles me though. Why did that fencing anarchist say Mr. Bassman sends his regards? Adam Bassman. I would presume it would be Adam Bassman, the man who left me one million pounds. And yeah, the man who left me one million pounds. But but maybe it's not. Who else would it be? Notice he said Mr. Not Adam. There is only one person Mr. Bassman could be. Who? Hey! Get yourself some fancy clothes for us. We are going to the dance tonight. <laughs> <laughs> David! Bonnie, what is it? I need to get this little splinter out of my arm as soon as possible. David, David Mashiam, quick! Tell me of your brother. My brother? Yes, the one you said souped up every ingot of your father's wealth and left swiftly <laughs> after the funeral. You know now, don't you? Bassanet is my mother's maiden name. Why didn't you tell me? I realise right after you arrived back from the fencing club, but in the way things went, I wasn't really given a chance. So, Adam Bassanet is your brother, which means a few things. One, your brother is dead. Two, before he's dead, he was an anarchist. Three, some way, somehow, I was a great friend of your brother's, and that is the biggest question at hand. Barney, I must go now, but tell me, what are your, what are your plans? The leader of the contractors and the anarchists will be at the Download Cup tonight. And, with finesse, I will confront him, interrogate him, find out who I am, who the leader actually is, my relationship with your brother and ambassador, and finally stop the reign of anarchy plaguing this country. Well, Oliver, Charles, Peter and Robin will be arriving at Ports for tonight. They will assist you. Yes, that would be very helpful. <laughs> You'll have to stay in intensive care for a number of days, sir. Your injuries are quite severe. Oh no, I'll be fine. I have the fence in the Daniel of Cups this time tomorrow. You tore your limit in your right leg in the explosion, sir. Oh, I'll just walk it off. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Finesse Sharp, National Fencing Champion, and Mr. Barney. Ah, uh, international fencing champion will do. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you? Certainly is. Damn the masks. I can't see a thing. I do realise you make up the two holes in the flat. <laughs> I knew that. I just didn't have any scissors. There are more pressing matters at hand than that of the masks. Have you taken care of the uh, prep that we had? Contractors guarding Edward Hippoway, like these usual bodyguards. Good. Now, I can look after myself, but just in case, you will keep an eye on me. Of course, sir. Good. Lady oh. Aveline Homely, daughter of Sir Homely, head of the Nearshire Railway System. Why is she here? She insisted on accompanying us to Portsmouth. Something about marrying you. What? Why? Quick, keep her away from me. She might just ruin everything. Oliver, Charles, where is Barney? Ah, oh, Aveline, wouldn't you rather see David? He's impossible getting a splinter um, out of his arm. Oh. I do not wish to speak with David. It is Barney I would like to talk to. Where is he? <laughs> oh, the music is starting. Will you take this dance, Lady Aveline? What? 
As I make my move, all will be well. How did you get here so quickly? Half the splinter is still in my arm. Oh, that's very smart. Abling's here, and she's out to marry me. Honestly, I'm scared. <laughs> uh, maybe she'll be a little disconcerted when I tell her of my donation to the fencing club. What? Half of my one million pounds to the fencing club. You will see that Abilene will lose interest in me pretty quickly. What a selfish little cow. Miles has arrived too. Oh, it'll be very hard for him to dance. Oh! Barney, catch! At last we meet again, Barney. That's been your new name. Tell me everything now or I will use this. Epic for sport. This is a double-edged rapier for killing. You stand no chance. You may be victorious, but let's settle this like men. If I win, you'll expose everything I ask. And if, I win, if you lose, I finish what I started in the first place. Now, hold on. We need our masks. Yes, this is a mask right ball. Let's On guard. Pre. Ale. Get a chair. Ah, the interrogating. We are getting quite good at it, David. Now. Edward Hepaway, leader of the contractors and the anarchists, who am I? You are Eric Wise, an important man to the anarchists and to me. You skimmed, you took the lowest job you could. Sometimes you're a nasty piece of work. A nasty piece of work? I hope you're not trying to insult me. Apart from being David's brother, who is Anna Bassanet? You honestly don't remember to add. That blast really must have wrecked your plan, right? And who was your best friend? You did everything together. When I reviewed my plan to keep the contract as well, you and Adam wouldn't have it. You went to collapse the government. So I have a for you to be blown up in the next after anarchist attack. Now, unfortunately, only one of you got the only short end of the stick. It's all coming back now. You were a fencer from the north. Adam was the son of a millionaire. Before he died, he must have destroyed most of his money to you, Eric. Do not call me Eric, for that is not my name. I am Barney. I am Barney, the man who has stopped your plans. Edward Hepaway. You honestly think you'd won? You honestly think I'd come here alone? Contractor! Do you think I'd come here alone? Take him to the prison cell and guard him with your lives. He will face the government. The real government. Eric, no Barney, don't do this! What you do in this world is a matter of no consequence. Nice going, Barney. You accomplished alone what we could never as a group. Thank you, Adam. But I have one last thing to settle. A third rematch between the two greatest fences in our midst. Of Barney and Finesse? This is a perfect way to end the night. Indeed. Finesse, will you take this bout? I will. <laughs>
think that all of us tonight are uh, more than surprised <laughs> by the quality, the dedication and the wonderful characterisation story and just sheer devotion to putting on a play that these students have shown. Please understand that the work that you saw tonight is not our work, it wasn't motivated by teachers, it was motivated by the very students themselves. Their rehearsals, in fact, were conducted off-site. It's only in the last few days that they've been rehearsing here. This is a completely self-motivated uh, and wonderful, I think, experience for all, for all of us to behold. So congratulations. Well, uh, <laughs> Not least, of course, um, I think we can give James, step forward, James, you've done it. I'm sure it will be in the video shop soon, Dad. <laughs> um, he'll be selling copies, I'm sure, in the foyer. <laughs> so, you know, look, um, do talk to each and every one of your um, uh, your friends and associates in the cast because I'm sure they've got a great story to tell about their involvement and uh, what they got out of being involved in this particular play. It's been wonderful associating uh, with you all, especially those of you who are not from Scotch, so, you know, welcome to our school. And you such a very short time, but it's been wonderful working with you all here. Thank you, everybody, for coming along tonight, and we hope to see you at another one of our shows. Oh, yeah. <laughs>